This video is brought to you by Practical Music Theory for the Rock Guitarist. My new book, which is a comprehensive guide to all aspects of music theory necessary for playing rock guitar. From blues to the cycle of fifths, from understanding and using modes to choosing the right notes for a melodic solo, from pentatonic scales to chord construction and keys. It's all covered in a clear and concise manner. With accompanying video demonstrations, jam tracks and tabs, you'll learn to use the knowledge you gain in accessible ways that make sense for less than the cost of a few guitar lessons. Check out the link in the description for more details. Hello chaps, just a quick little word before we get into the main part of the video. Uh, it's a video that I recorded about a month or so back and consequently uh, the, uh, the current a uh, hot new topic of these inspired by Gibson Custom Shop Epiphones had not yet been released. Um, so if you're thinking that today's video is going to be a response to that uh, new release of Epiphone guitars, I'm afraid it isn't. What we're going to be talking about are Epiphone prices in general and the direction that they've gone in over the past, well, couple of decades or so. Um, I still think that the points that I arrived at and the conclusions that I uh, came to in uh, this uh, following video stand up, perhaps even more so now than they did when I made the video. Let me know what you think down in the comments, uh, but now here I am from about a month ago talking about Epiphone prices. I'll see you next time. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Yes, I'm jumping on the Epiphone pricing bandwagon today. Everybody and his dog has been talking about that in uh, recent times. Um, you know, uh, even me, I had a bit of a chat with Jim from Audiomo Music a few weeks ago, I don't know if you saw that video. And uh, one thing we were talking about is, aren't Epiphone prices just getting a little bit out of hand? And uh, there is that perception. And I thought I'd do a little bit of digging to see if it is the case or if it's just, um, you know, if it's just something that we're perceiving that isn't really happening. And I've come to some conclusions and I'll tell you how I got there. Um, usually when I um, do these kind of price comparison with days gone by type videos, because that's what we're talking about here. Are Epiphones more expensive in real terms now than they were, say, I don't know, 20, 25 years ago? Um, and, um, yeah, whenever I'm doing those kind of, uh, kind of historical price comparisons, what I like to do is to find some prices from, um, you know, the, the period in question. So I spent a good couple of hours trawling the internet, doing image searches for, um, you know, kind of scans essentially of guitar magazines from the nineties where maybe you'd kind of see an advert for a, an Epiphone dealership and look at what kind of prices those guitars were going for back then. My memory from say the mid to late 90s is that um, an Epiphone Les Paul standard back then would cost you somewhere between three and four hundred pounds but I wanted um, uh, something a little bit more concrete than a vague memory so I put a post out on the uh, community tab asking if anybody had any old guitar magazines you know with um, with you know um, prices in that they could refer me to and uh, one chap called Anton who um, is a regular on this channel, um, you know, kind of really came up with the goods and sent me um, quite a few scans of his uh, collection of old guitar magazines. And two or three other people also, well, a few other people also said, I bought an Epiphone Les Paul in 1990, whatever it was, and this is how much it cost. So here's um, what uh, we can glean from those figures. Okay, here is um, an advert from Guitarist Magazine from December 1994. I can't remember which dealership this was, but um, it was obviously in the UK. And they were saying in the back end of 1994, an Epiphone Les Paul Standard 299. Um, <clears throat> moving on to just over a year later from February 96, an Epiphone Les Paul Standard um, the list price here is shown as 410, but this column here is showing you what this actual dealership is, uh, you know, what discount they're giving you. This, I think this was Flying Pig Music, if you remember them. Uh, and they're saying despite the list price being 410, they'll sell you one for 295. Um, then another dealership here, this again is from 1996, Epiphone Les Paul Standard, 349. And then this is an Anderton's advert, uh, again from um, February 96. 
um, telling us that if you want an Epiphone Les Paul standard, you can buy it on the Never Never for a deposit of £65 plus 12 payments of 27 and that works out at £389. So that is um, you know an idea of what the dealerships were selling um, Les Paul, Epiphone Les Pauls for in uh, the mid-1990s. Now let's take a look at some of the responses I got uh, from people who actually bought uh, that kind of guitar back then and what they paid for it. December 94. Bought a gold top Epiphone Les Paul. Paid £410 at MOR Music in York. Still got the receipt. It's still my number one guitar. Hasn't been beaten in 30 years. Cheers, David. Epiphone Les Paul standard in 1999 was £349. Standard gold top, 449 I can't seem to find any older guitar mags than 1999. Bought an Epiphone Les Paul 100 in about 92 93 for 349 quid. It got stolen and I replaced it with a Les Paul standard that you've seen in about 95 That was 399 quid. Hi John, this is Ravi. My first ever electric was bought in central London in the summer of 98. It was an Epiphone Les Paul standard. They threw in an amp and the whole lot was 399.99. Hope that is of use. Okay, here are those 1990s prices listed in chronological order from 1994 to 1999. So what we're kind of getting here is a an overview of what... Uh, Epiphone Les Paul standard would have cost in the mid to late 1990s. Uh, there's one that I've missed out, which was the uh, Les Paul gold top, because that's not, um, you know, a... Uh, uh, comparing like with like the gold top always carried a little bit of a premium price wise so these are all just the prices that we looked at of the les paul standards by epiphone in the mid to late 90s next thing we're going to do is plug those numbers into the bank of england inflation calculator and see what they are adjusted for inflation in uh, 2024 and we get these figures so the next thing we need to do is total those up and that comes to four thousand seven hundred and one pounds and 40 pence divide by one two three four five six seven uh to get an average and there is the figure there so we can say with um a reasonable degree of confidence that um the average price of an epiphone les paul standard in the mid to late 90s adjusted for inflation to 2024 money uh comes out at 671 pounds and 63 pence let's compare that figure with um what a Les Paul standard by Epiphone will cost you if you went out and bought one today. Right then, beginning with PMT Online, their price for a Epiphone Les Paul standard 50s. Uh, it's worth mentioning here that the Les Paul standard from Epiphone nowadays is um, kind of divided up into a 50s model and a 60s model. And I'm just basically going with either or with those because that is the Epiphone Les Paul standard of today. Anyway, PMT will sell you one for £501. Um, guitar amp keyboard or GAC, uh, they're looking at uh, £519 if you want to buy one from them. Um, Gear for Music, £515 for an Epiphone Les Paul Standard 50s. And then, uh, where are we here? Toman, £515 for the same guitar. Uh, an Epiphone Standard 60s uh, from Guitar Guitar is £599. And uh, Anderton's uh, Les Paul Standard 50s, uh, a bit more expensive at Anderton's, 649 is what they'll uh, charge you for one of those. And then Rich Tone Music, uh, the cheapest of the bunch, I think, uh, 499 is what you'll have to pay them if you want to own an Epiphone Les Paul Standard 50s in Heritage Cherry Sunburst. So... Uh, let's go and uh, do some uh, totals and uh, averages for what the uh, Epiphone Les Paul standard will cost you in 2024. Right, here are those prices that we've just seen um, listed here. We did seven price samples from the mid to late 90s, so I've done seven, the same sample size from uh, 2024. PMT, GAC, Gear for Music, Toman, Guitar Guitar, Andertons and Rich Tone. Those are the prices that we saw. Uh, total those up, it comes to £3,797. And if you divide by seven, you get an average of £542.43. So, given that the average price from the mid to late 90s, uh, when adjusted for inflation, so we're comparing like with like, uh, when adjusted for inflation was 671.63, and this is the average price now, based upon these 
samples and these calculations. Um, please let me know if you think I've made a misstep, by the way, in the comments. Just let me know if you think, oh, you got that wrong or whatever. But I don't think I have. Um, but based on, you know, these calculations, an Epiphone Les Paul standard, the average price is that in today's money. And from the mid to late 90s, uh, the average price in today's money would be that. Epiphone Les Paul standards have got cheaper in the intervening years. That's the only conclusion that these figures support. As I say, please let me know if you think I've made a mistake with the figures, but that seems to be the conclusion that I'm coming to. So why is there this perception that Epiphone guitars have got more expensive over the years? Well, I think I have an idea why that might be, and that's what we're going to look at next. Yeah, the reason why I think there is this perception that Epiphone guitars have got more expensive over the years and are more expensive now than they've ever been is down to the pricing structure that guitar companies employ. And um, I think I can hopefully demonstrate, I think Gibson or Epiphone are missing a little bit of a trick here. If you look at the big three brands, Fender, Gibson and PRS, two of those brands, Fender and PRS, have uh, a three tier pricing uh, system. With Fender, you get the uh, Squire guitars and then after, you know, you get to the top of that kind of tier and then you're onto the Made in Mexico guitars and you get to that top of that tier and then you're into the um, Made in the USA guitars. So Squire, Made in Mexico, made in the USA. And yes, I know there's Fender Japan and all that, but I'm just talking in broad terms here. You know, those are the three main uh, tiers of Fender pricing. Likewise, with PRS, you get the uh, the SE guitars, um, you know, which are the, the sort of cheaper ones or the, the cheapest of a PRS um, range. Then you graduate up to the next tier, which are the S2 guitars. And then after that, you get to the top of that tier and you get to the... Um, you know the, the the core guitars you know the what 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 was basically once all that was available for as a prs you know when we used to think of paul reed smith guitars back in the day it, they were all that range and they were all made in america but then you know they kind of came in with the se's and the then the s2 so with fender you've got squire made in mexico made in the usa with prs you've got se s2 and core three tiers of pricing and this is where uh, Gibson and Epiphone are, you know, kind of, I think, missing a trick because, you know, the bottom tier of Gibson's kind of family tree are the Epiphone uh, guitars that we've been talking about today. And the top tier are the, you know, made in the USA. And you can go on from there into custom shop and, and, and everything in the same way as you can with Fender and private stock with PRS. But, you know, we're just talking about the three main tiers here. Um, you know, so the, you've got the, um, the the Epiphone guitars, those are the kind of the cheaper ones, and then you've got the Made in the USA Gibsons, which are the more expensive ones. So what's the tier in between called? Well, it's called Epiphone, you know, and that, I think, is the problem. Uh, a guitar like this, which I haven't done the review of yet, but I will be... Uh, uh, doing so shortly. This is one of those Epiphone 59s that came with the um, lovely um, hard case and everything that uh, created quite a stir a couple of three years ago. Uh, if you're wondering why it's in this colour, it's because this is one of the ones that uh, you can get from Anderton's. Uh, Anderton's is uh, exclusive in this uh, kind of kind of almost lemon drop kind of finish. Um, yeah, so it's I, I applaud. Um, Gibson for you know coming out with this kind of middle tier of um, of guitars you know you've got your Epiphones then you've got your made in the USA Gibsons I just think the trick that they're missing is that the tier in the middle which that guitar belongs to and you know and there's those Carina Explorers and V's and then obviously the the uh, the, the new Kirk Hammett Greeny guitar um, you know, they're all kind of indicative of that middle tier that's not quite the uh, the, the budget-conscious Epiphone, but it's not quite the wallet-busting uh, made in the USA Gibson. But the problem is they're still branding them as Epiphones. And, you know, maybe... I mean, didn't they used to do Orville by Gibson? Maybe resurrect that brand for that middle tier. Or something like that. Or make it... Um, 
you know, make all of the Epiphone Les Pauls in that higher tier, like the greeny one, have the Gibson headstock shape as a way of differentiating. Maybe um, Gibson by Epiphone or something like that. It used to be always Epiphone by Gibson, didn't it? But something to differentiate that middle tier of guitars. Then you wouldn't get people saying, you know, that Epiphone guitars are turning out to be too expensive. Um, you know, if you kind of rebrand them as something that's, over and above the, um, the the regular run of the mill epiphones that we've been looking at today, that might be a way that um, you could um, you know differentiate that tier of guitars. Anyway, that's those are just my thoughts. The headline figures, as I say, based on the um, the, the calculations we've done and the figures that I've accumulated, are that the regular kind of, let's call them run of the mill uh, epiphone guitars are cheaper in real terms than they were back in the mid to late 90s but they've just kind of introduced this new tier of you know for epiphone very expensive prices um that i think should be rebranded as something else and that is the video for today folks hope you found it informative and useful in some small way and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not drop me a like as well while you're at it don't forget the live stream every friday 5 p.m uk time we drink beer and talk about stuff music and guitars whatever it's a great way to kick off the weekend and I'd love to see you there if you can make it. But for now, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe and above all, stay sane. Bye for now.